What has 10 legs, two eyes, and a built-in suit of armor? That's right. It's a crab. and I'm a marine biologist here at the Central Coast Aquarium in Avila Beach. Every day I get to work with all sorts of amazing creatures and I'm really excited to get to share them with you. We're bringing you these videos with the help of the San Luis Obispo County Public Libraries. So let's get started with today's critter. Now today we're gonna talk about one of my favorite animals, crabs. Crabs are amazing because even though they're all crabs, they come in all sorts of different shapes and sizes, just like people. Some crabs are big, some are small, some eat plants, some are predators, some even like to accessorize. Today we're going to meet three very unique species of crab that live right here on the central coast of California. Now, before I go picking up any of the crabs in this tank, it's important to remind you that I have the training and experience necessary to safely handle these animals. That means I can stay safe and the animals can stay safe. You shouldn't go picking up every crab you find. Remember, they have some pretty sharp claws that can be very strong. Now, let's start with a pretty cool species that lets us see clearly how crabs are shaped. This crab is called a kelp crab, Pugetia producta, because it's often found climbing through the kelp forest, living in the very same algae that it likes to eat. Let's take a look at this animal's body parts. First, how many legs do you count on this crab? How many eyes do you see? Where is its mouth and what is it shaped like? Crabs are called decapods because they have 10 legs, five on each side. They use these legs to walk around in the inner tidal zone and under the water. And their front pair of legs ends in two claws, which are used for grabbing, tearing, or crushing their food. For the kelp crab, this means snipping off small pieces of kelp that it can eat. Crabs have two eyes at the front of their head. Their eyes are stalked, which allows them to protrude over the top of their exoskeleton. Crab eyes help them navigate their environment. A crab's mouth is made up of many parts, which might look like tiny legs if you inspect them closely. These mouth parts are used for handling, cleaning, and consuming their food. Finally, all crabs are invertebrates. This means that they don't have skeletons or bones inside their bodies. Invertebrates often have other hard structures that still protect them. For crabs, this hard structure is called the exoskeleton. It's a hard structure on the outside of their body that protects all the soft things on the inside of their body. Crabs can shed their exoskeletons when they get too large. This is called a molt and it's similar to a snake shedding its skin. Once the crab sheds its molt, it grows a new one and it continues to protect it. Now, 
Now that we know the basics of a crab's biology, let's meet some of the other interesting crabs that live right here on the Central Coast. This particular crab is called a decorator crab. Can you guess why we call it that? Decorator crabs are expert camouflagers because they take things from their environment and use them as accessories. Decorator crabs will grab anemones, algae, and other small animals to attach to their exoskeleton. This helps the crab blend in with its surroundings and hide from predators. Decorator crabs can often be found with different decoration depending on the environment they're living in. A crab with lots of red algae will often be covered with red algae. Whereas crabs that find themselves among rocks with tiny strawberry anemone are often covered in tiny strawberry anemone. Like other crabs, decorator crabs do shed their exoskeleton. So what happens to all their decoration when they molt? Unfortunately, they have to say goodbye to the old decoration and get some new ones. These crabs are great at finding new things to attach to their bodies. And many of them are redecorated in just a matter of hours after they molt. Finally, let's meet one of the more familiar crabs that you might see in the tide pools. These little animals are called hermit crabs. Hermit crabs get their name because they're actually borrowing their shells. They have their own exoskeleton, just like any other crab, and they move into a tiny house. Many crabs choose shells that came from snails. In this case, these three crabs chose shells from three different snails. Like other crabs, hermit crabs have 10 legs. Hermit crab legs are extra special because they use the back two pairs of legs, or four legs, to hold on to the shell they're living in. The rest are used for walking. Crabs are an amazingly diverse group of animals, which means there's many different types of crabs in the ocean. Now, all of these crabs are very important parts of their ecosystems. Some are predators, which means they eat other living animals in their environment. Others like to eat dead or decaying plant and animal material. This is a very important service to the ecosystem because it recycles those nutrients back into the food web. Thanks, crabs. Now remember, if you meet any of these big crabs in the wild, it's best to leave them alone. We don't want to hurt them, and we certainly don't want them to hurt us. Hermit crabs are one of the few creatures that are safe to handle if you find them in the tide pools. Just remember to put them back where you found them. You might have interrupted their dinner. I've had a great time teaching you about crabs today. 
Come check out some of our other videos to learn about other amazing ocean creatures that we have right here on the Central Coast of California. Until next time, have a great day.